to correct, course correct to. You know, you see you go, you know, when you're on a ship or something, you're constantly course correcting. There's no straight line on the ocean, right? So similarly in life, there's no straight line. So we have to constantly course correct, course correct. If we're not clear on what we're course correcting to, that's when all the shit happens. That's when all the imbalances are created. So could you state your calling? People experience, my calling is people experiencing interconnection. <coughs> try, try saying that and see how it feels. Mm -hmm. So even if it feels unnatural, just try it on for a couple of weeks. My calling is people experiencing what? Or realizing or being any kind of verb like that experientially. So people being or experiencing or knowing what? My calling is people knowing, experiencing one. The one? Uh, what, one oneness? Oneness, one. yeah. And oneness. Cool. I don't know. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it back on the on the on the how do you call it? The, uh, the live stream and then I will find I find out because now I'm uh, Cool, yeah, okay, that's that's yeah. totally fine. So you're it's a work in progress. Um well, let's just say it's connection for now. People experiencing abundant connection, right? Liberating connection, oneness. Um, how would you course correct your current patterns of thinking and feeling and behaving to people experiencing oneness or connection? What's, what's the root cause of that behavior that you want to change? What is the belief in your mind somewhere that is feeling like it's beneficial to do that, even though you feel that it's time for you to change that. Uh, then I'm, that I'm not whole. whole then I'm not there you go. Awesome. That you're not one. Yes. Nice. W wholeness is oneness, right? Because if it's whole, it includes everything, which makes everything one. Oneness, wholeness, right? Yes. People experiencing wholeness. Try that. Uh, people experiencing uh, wholeness. <laughs> cool. Good. Well, it feels good. feels better. So can you identify the thought or the belief? How would you verbalize the belief that causes that feeling? You already kind of said it, but I want you to verbalize it again. That, that, uh, I believe. That I, I, I'm, the belief mind. is that I'm in that moment, in that feeling, when I, when I get the habit of, of getting the atten uh, attention, mm -hmm. then the, the, the feeling is that I'm not uh, whole. Mm -hmm. yeah, not, I'm not, not okay. I cool. need somebody to be whole. Sweet. And that feels bad, right? Yeah, it feels uh, bad. Yeah. yeah. It feels bad. Why? Because it, it, it's like an addiction. It, it, it's like... Uh, uh, no, actually, that's not why it feels bad. No? No. Why does it feel bad? To believe that you're not whole. Think in terms of alignment to higher self. So your emotions always show you if your perspective is in alignment. So just because it's a lie? Or? It's a lie. Did you say that? Yeah. Yes, exactly. It doesn't feel good because it's not true. It doesn't, it doesn't sync up with the frequency of truth. And that's the emotional guidance system. It lets you know when you're out of whack in your way of thinking and believing so that you have an opportunity to investigate, identify, and course correct, or replace, or resolve. So we have a belief in your system that is out of alignment, it feels bad, and in order to feel better, instead of realigning it, what you have learned to do in the past is find circumstances that distract you from that, or that make you feel the opposite, right? So that there's a temporary gratification which if you remember on our schedule is in the column of consuming, yeah. right? Right. So because, because you haven't effectively up to this point dealt with the out of alignment belief, automatically the way that we're conditioned is to look outward to blame and or get fulfillment. So you're right. consuming and it doesn't feel good. And so you're at this point where you're sick of yourself, where you're positively repulsed by your own out of alignmentness and you want to clear this up. That's great. That's amazing. So this is the ground from which you can heal. And so it can go very quickly if only you sort of like clearly see what's going on. So give me a second. Do you believe in creation or God? Yes. Do you believe that it is whole? It's whole. Nice. Do you believe that all of its expressions are intentional? What do you mean by intentional? Meaning that, do you believe that there is something that ever happens or do you ever believe that someone is born or something is created 
that was not intentional or purposeful? Um, I don't know. Okay, cool. So let's take it one. Do you believe that? Do you believe that God is the ultimate authority, the ultimate intelligence? Do you believe everything is intelligent? Yes, I believe that. Yeah. Beautiful. So then you must be too, right? Yes. And if there's only one, and that one is the supreme intelligence, and everything, everything that could ever possibly be is created out of that intelligence in harmony with that one wholeness overseeing everything. So from the parts perspective, it might seem like things are fragmented. But from the whole's perspective, there's an intelligence to everything. Would you agree? Agree. Sweet. So that includes you, no? Yes. Nice. So everything about you is intelligent. Yes. Even when you're being stupid. Yes. So stupidity is still an intelligent expression of the one infinite creator that somehow is expressing and exploring the wholeness of creation. So there's literally nothing about you that is not whole, that is not integral to the whole of creation. Would you agree? Yes. Are you, are you the body? Uh, no, I don't think so. No. Where, where does the belief come from that you're not good enough or not whole? Uh, it's a sort of sort emotion pattern. Right. And it, it comes from taking on this body as if it's you, right? Like yes. people pointing fingers at you when you were younger and growing I up and so, like yeah. calling you names or whatever it is, right? Mistreating. You start to feel like you're the body. It's like awareness when we're ch childlike is vast and open and sure we're looking through these eyes, but there's no words for identity. We're just like, oh. <laughs> and then, you know, we get a name and we start getting pointed to and when we have little cramps and we cry, someone responds and takes care of our body and the cramps go away. So we get reinforced through conditioning, both physically, circumstantially, and verbally, and subliminally, and psychologically, and vibrationally, and emotionally, <laughs> ancestrally, and sociologically, <laughs> politically, ontologically. <laughs> In all these ways, we're being conditioned to collapse around the sense of being here, being this body. Correct? Correct. And then, this body now feels like us. It's not. <laughs> But now we associate with this. And so we go through life and more people, you know, we, we meet other dicks like yourself. <laughs> and they... <laughs> <laughs> At least dicks are honest, right? <laughs> you can hardly blame a dick for not being honest. There's poing. <laughs> there it is. Thank you. It's, it's hard to hide. It's just so honest. It's just in your face. Right there. <laughs> just, the truth is naked, bare naked, right there. So then you meet other people and they reinforce a certain belief system that I'm, you be, as soon as you feel partial, you no longer feel a whole. So it's beautiful that your calling is about wholeness or about connection or oneness or in that range. Because now you've taken on a fragmented identity which is so representative of humanity's theme, right? So literally what you've taken on in this life is a portion of the darkness that humanity is working with. It's working out. You know, as, as a collective, our theme is to move from darkness into light right now, right around this time. So a lot of people that came into this world have deliberately taken on a portion of that collective, chose the perfect body, the perfect mind, the perfect birthplace, the perfect parents, the perfect initial life conditioning circumstances to take on a portion of that collective lack belief, that insecurity, so that they could bring light to it. And that's what you're doing now, because you're here in this retreat, you're sharing with honesty, you're tr making it transparent, which already increases the light that can reach those shadows. So actually you're standing up, not just for yourself, but you're standing up for millions of people around the world, first of all. Does that make sense? Yeah, thank you. Yes. Literally, our bodies and our minds and our conditioning and our parents and our environment, they are literally a crystallization of a portion of the darkness that lies within the collective consciousness of humanity that wants to be worked out. Literally, your incarnation has nothing to do with who you really are for most people, unless you're truly, truly native to this earth. But for most people that show up at my retreats, there is a large percentage, if not all, of the incarnation is actually about taking on a chunk of that 
abstract, energetic, collective energy, turning it into a body, a mind, and a conditioning. Literally, that's what it is. It's nothing to do with you. You're the light of God. You're the light of your soul. You are your calling. You are your free spirit. And so that free spirit takes on a cloak. It's like putting on a, ward, a, a robe. That rope has the feeling of your body, the symptoms your body has, the skills, the, the failures or weaknesses. All that stuff is literally not you, right? But you've taken it on as you so that from the inside out, you can wake up, increase the awareness and the brightness and the light and literally turn the collective's darkness inside out into light through your own incarnation. Your incarnation is humanity's darkness and you're transforming it into light. Thank you. Yeah. So even just, to, even just to see that, even to acknowledge oneself in that way, rather than to identify with the shit that you take on, you know, takes care of so much. You gotta put it in a proper context. And it feels good because it's true. Who feels good about what I just shared? Even when you apply it to your own life. It's because it's true. You know, a large percentage of the stuff you deal with on a day-to-day -day basis is because you have mistaken your incarnation to be who you are. Your incarnation belongs to humanity, handed back, but with more brightness and light and transformation than you took it with. But you literally took on a body-mind environment experience. You took that on. That's part of this density. It's part of the substance that you agreed to play with. It's not you. When you die, it's not you. When you are alive, it's not you. But mistaken identity generates this sense of limitation and then it becomes so much harder to see the brightness because now you're becoming humanity. So it's so important to understand from a proper context why you are suffering to begin with and why you took on the stuff you took on with to begin with. So thank you, first of all, for your service. How do you feel? How thank you, feel? you. I feel uh, relieved. Okay, beautiful. Cool. Yeah.